It's just going to do a brief review, a reaction to Adrian Broner's uh, little rant um, at the at the final press conference for his card. You know, he's taking on Jesse Vargas. Uh, Co-features, Jamal Charlo taking on Hugo Centennial Jr., the guy to the far left of the screen, and Tank taking on Jesus Clearyard, you know. Um, you know, Broner, you know, went off. He went off with his usual, you know, they don't want to see me winning and, you know, see me nice cars and APs and they don't want to see me this. And he said, Leonard Ellaby's a bitch ass motherfucker. He ain't he with Jesse Vargas. We know Mayweather Promotions used to train. I mean, used to promote Jesse Vargas. They promoting the card. And, you know, he went on and just saying some, some ignorant shit, man. You know, he doesn't have the laser focus of a fighter that's career on the line. And this is the immaturity. That's probably going to come back and bite, his, bite him in the ass. Probably maybe not this fight or the next fight. You know, how can you, at this point, you know, believe in this guy? You know, how can you take this guy serious? He said he trained his ass for this fight off. He said he trained his ass off for the Mikey Garcia fight. He's saying the same thing. Anybody that's laser focused, they're not going to be doing this. Even to sell a fight, even at this point, if he continues to want to market himself and that's the angle that you want to use and possibly that's the angle that he's using. At this point, if my if my job is on the line or or my life is at stake or my you know how I'm living, how I'm feeding my kids or how I feed my family, how I provide for myself and my household is at stake, I'm focused. I'm not worried about learning LB. I'm not I'm not worried about, you know, uh, uh Takashi six nine, whatever that guy's name is. I'm not worried about nothing but the job at hand. I'm laser focused. You know, I'm not talking, you know, I'm just keeping it short, answering the questions short, simple, sweet, and I'm trying to get out there. And eat right and train and get ready for, for, for the weigh-in Friday and get ready for Saturday. What he's putting out there is the same immature Adrian Broner. Is he selling the fight? Yeah, he's selling the fight. Leonard Ellerby, you playing the role? Yeah, he playing the role. Because ain't nobody in their right mind going to let their sit, sit sit there and let somebody call him a bitch-ass nigga. And I'll link the press conference in the, in the description so you know it's true. Nobody. Dude, I'd have had hands put on this motherfucker quick. I don't give a fuck if he is a boxer. As soon as he left out of there, I had both his legs, bro. Off rip. You know, I put him to the side like, you don't talk to me like that. Who the fuck you think you is? But like I said, they all playing their roles to sell this fight. It's as simple as that. Look at the smirks on those guys' faces. This shit is to simply sell the fight. And at the end of the day, we don't want to see Broner talk. We want to see him sell the fight in the ring at this point. Anybody that's serious don't have a mind of a fucking six-year-old sitting up there and their careers on the line. Anybody that say they're getting serious after getting whooped by Mikey Garcia not grabbing a woman by the private part in Atlanta, at Lenox Mall. You feel me? Oh, I trained my ass off for this fight. Yeah, you trained your ass off for the last few fights and got your ass whooped. You know, nobody believing in him, man. And, you know, if, if he wins, he wins. I'll give him that. But at the end of the day, he fighting Jesse at a catchway of 144 if you didn't know. You know, so he got an advantage right there. You know, can, did Kevin Cunningham change him? It's yet to be seen. It's yet to be seen. And, and we're we going to see it. But obviously his, mind, his mindset hasn't changed. You know, obviously he's the same immature, cocky SOB that he was before. And it's cool to be an arrogant, cocky SOB sometimes. To market yourself in boxing. But when you took two, L, two L's, bro. No, three L's, excuse me, to Madonna. And you Are you still talking? To Sean Porter, are you still talking? And Mikey Garcia, are you still talking? Are you still using the same angle you used in the press conference? I'm a four-time world champion in four different weight classes. No, you was not. You was a three-time world title holder. You was only a champion at 135 pounds lightweight. And I'm going to stand by that. He was a three-time world title holder and a champion at 135. I consider he was the best lightweight at the time. Stop trying to hang on to that angle. At the end of the day, this career stopped today for Adrian Broner. Or if it stops Saturday after Jesse Vargas put hands on him, you know, if that happens, he's not a Hall of Famer. I don't give a fuck what you say. He's not a Hall of Famer. Fuck what you heard. You know, don't don't let that don't let that shit don't shit fool you. Who the fuck did he win his titles from? Paula Montanaji, and then we fought a real world away Madonna. He got his ass whooped. That Vincent guy, he fought for the one thirty pound title. He wasn't amongst the best at, at featherweight. You feel me? Khabib wasn't the best amongst the best at 140. He wasn't the best guy at 140. You know, people say, well, Jesse Vargas had a tough fight with Khabib. Jesse Vargas had a lot of tough fights. We got with Dewey Cooper, he became a different fighter, though. 
just as when Marcus Madonna got with Robert Garcia and we thought he was still a bum. I ain't gonna say a bum, just a rugged, rough, tough fighter with no technique. And Robert Garcia gave him refined his skills. Dewey Cooper refined Jesse Vargas' skills. Do I know why Dewey, Jesse Vargas and Dewey Cooper split? I don't know why. It was a it was a match made in heaven for me. Dewey Cooper had Jesse Vargas doing shit that he wasn't doing before. He with Mike McCullum now. He's like his fifth trainer. Roger Mayweather, Eric Morales, Roy Jones, Dewey Cooper, now Mike McCullum. I might have missed somebody. So, at the end of the day, man, people just tired of this motherfucker talking, dog. Don't talk, show. We tired of him talking. You know, he gonna, hopefully if he get whooped this time, it's the end of him, bro. I don't have no hard feelings for him. If his story ends up tragically, you know, him in a dumpster chopped up, I wouldn't give a fuck. Because this arrogant SOB had a lot of chances to get it together. People still paying to go see him to fight. People still, you know, tuning in to see him fight. People still say, oh, he focused. People still saying, oh, you know, Kevin Cunningham might have got it together. He had a good training camp. Oh, you know, he 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 secluded himself, you know, for training. You know, he told everybody, you know, don't come to training camp. He'll see him after the fight. He's serious this time. And will he get serious results? I hope so, man. For the betterment of him, I hope so that it work out for him. But honestly, you know, it's hard not to root against a dumb motherfucker like him. It's hard to root for, excuse me. You know, and, and, and at the end of the day, you know, this dude, one one minute, he want to love Mayweather. He want to lust over Mayweather in the interview and say, oh, I need my big bro to call me to help me get through these these trials and tribulations situations I'm going through. And a minute, the camera come, oh, it's fuck, it's fuck big bro. It's fuck Mayweather promotions. But you want to be so down with the money team, bro. You know, you want to be all in the big boy mansion, you know, licking the sweat off that peanut head ass nigga Floyd head, though. You wanted to be Floyd so bad. You want, you wanted to be Floyd so bad that you imitated him in the ring, even though it didn't fit your style. And you still imitating a nigga that you you dissing. You still trying to talk shit and act like you on that level. You ain't on that pay-per-view level. Never will be. You know, they just eating it up for ratings. And then at some point, man, at some point, you got to just say, shut the fuck up and just make it happen. You know, at some point, somebody need to pull this kid to the side and say, look here, man, this shit is serious. Kevin Cunningham, pull him to the side. Hey, shit, fuck about selling the fight. We, we laser focus. This shit's serious. And he going around beefing with a rapper and rappers, Takashi 69 you know, going to his jeweler. This motherfucker not focused. You know, he not. He not worried about the task at hand. He not seeing his careers on the line. He want to be a rapper anyway. And can't nobody get control of this guy. Can't Al Hammond can't call him and say, hey, man, chill out, man. Take it serious and this and that. Now they changed around the open media workouts. They canceled him because Takashi 69 and his crew might show up. Like that whack, like that whack ass rapper gonna do something, man. These niggas not about that life. What did I say about Broner? He's street nigga, real street nigga. I give him that. But he need to be a real boxer with focus to, to today, and it ain't gonna happen. But it's TBC and more. Y'all know what it is. We gone.